What's up everybody? Welcome to the Bike City Woodworks channel. My name is Brian and today we're going to create an Asanoha Kumiko pattern from the Kumiko kit. Let's get into it. If you're not familiar with Kumiko, it's a Japanese woodworking technique of creating intricate patterns using multiple pieces of wood. Each piece is pressure fit with bevels to lock them together. There are over 300 individual patterns of Kumiko, and infinite combinations can be created by mixing and matching them. But today, we're going to be working on Asanoha, which is one of the most approachable patterns. Like all Kumiko, we need pieces for the frame. For the Asanoha pattern, we'll also need diagonals, the pieces we'll call the hinges, and the pieces that lock the hinges. And of course, we need our Kumiko pairing jigs and a sharp plane or chisel. I use a cheap thumb plane from the big box store. It works great after a tune-up. The first step is to put together the frame. Well, if you're using a Bike City Kumiko kit. If you're starting from scratch, there are a few more steps needed before you get here. First, you'll need to mill your lumber to final dimension. I normally take it down to about a half an inch thick and chop my pieces to no longer than 36 inches so I can control them on the table saw. Then you'd cut the cross laps for the frame and rip the board into strips the same width as the cross laps. You can rip by hand with a band saw or a table saw. The only one that won't require cleanup with a plane or a sander is the table saw, although it does waste a lot more wood. Rip one by one until you have enough pieces. Quick word on the cross laps. You're going to want to cut them to the exact same width that your frame is thick. The thickness of your frame is entirely up to you, but the cross laps need to be exactly the same width as that thickness. For ease and repeatability, I like to match both the width of my cross lap and the thickness of my frame to the thickness of the kerf of my table saw blade. Cross cut your strips for the six frame pieces, four diagonals, 16 hinges, and eight locks. And now you're ready to start. Assuming you've already made the jigs or have a Bike City Kumiko kit, that is. The first step is to glue the frame together. I use a dab of glue at each cross lap and glue it on a piece of MDF so it stays flat. Once the glue dries a little, I start cutting the diagonals. I put a diagonal piece into the 45 degree jig until it protrudes just a bit. I slide the stop to meet it and tighten it down. Referencing the jig, I cut a bevel on one side. Then I flip and repeat for the other side to create this 90 degree angle at the end. Once I have a good fit, I'll repeat with the other three. Here's two tips when it comes to working with Kumiko. Make extras of each part, and if your piece is slightly too long or slightly too short, try it in another square. The likelihood that all squares are exactly the same size is very low, which means your piece may still work. If all else fails, just cut one of your extra pieces, making sure you solve for the error first. Usually it's moving the stop block slightly. Now that all of the diagonals are in place, I can start on the hinges. For this I use the 22 and a half and 67 and a half degree jig. First, I cut a 22.5 degree bevel on both sides of one end to create a 45 degree angle. I rinse and repeat for all 16 hinges before moving on to the other side. For the opposite end of the hinge, I mark the rough length, about 1 8 of an inch longer than it needs to be, and carefully cut a 67.5 degree bevel on two of the hinges. I want these two hinges to meet without any gaps. I want to bring you in close for just a second and show you what I'm seeing. You see the gaps here, here, and here? That means these two pieces are too long. So what we need to do is we need to reset the jig just to pair a little bit more off of each edge. This is exactly what we want to see. No gaps here, no gaps up here, no gaps down here.
Now's the fun part. We're going to cut the 67 and a half degree side two thirds down the thickness of the piece to create a pocket where the lock will fit. Once it's done, we're looking for our hinges to have this shape where the lock fits neatly into. I adjust the stop block slightly until it looks like two thirds of the bevel is sticking out. Then I pair carefully. Once I have a good fit on these two hinges, I use the already set up jig to cut the remaining 14. Finally, for the locks, I start by cutting a 90 degree angle on one end just like I did with the diagonals. Then I mark the lock's rough length and place it back in the jig with the other end out. Since this is a critical cut, I'm going to take my time and take thin cuts until I get a good tension fit. Too much tension and it will bend the pattern, while too little tension will mean it won't hold together. Repeat for all the locks, slide them into place, and I have my final Asanoha pattern. What's really cool about these patterns is that you can get really creative with them. You can use them on box lids, in furniture, or whatever you'd like. You can even use different wood species to create color contrast. So there you have it, Asanoha from a Bike City Kumiko kit. If you'd like to order a kit for yourself, check out the link in the description below. And if you want to know what Kumiko I'm currently working on, follow Bike City Woodworks on Instagram. If this is your first time here, welcome. And please hit that subscribe button for more Kumiko and woodworking projects in the future. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below and I'll be glad to answer them. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.